you know how when a man starts a business, especially the black community, I'm not sure if white people do this or not. And the black woman see that the man has a business. It can you can have an empire, empire, and in her jealousy she goes, "Hide your little business." <laughs> I heard you had a little business too jealous to admit because her heart is wicked. Live high your little business. One thing for sure and without a doubt, without a one iota of doubt, angry people are on the side of evil. And the people who overcome anger are on the side of good. It's just, there's nothing in between. That's it. It's just nothing else but that. It's a spiritual battle, and they don't want you to know it. They want you to think it's physical. They want you to take it personally. They want you to overreact within yourself and outside of yourself as well, against others. Because when you do that, they control you. That's what they are doing in my country today. They are controlling the people by putting evil ideas in their imaginations, in their mind, getting them to overreact, and they are gaining power over you which make them think that they have power. It's, it's fake power, but they think it's real power and wealth. When will you take control of your own life by rising above all situations? No other human being have nothing to give you. Zero. They have nothing to give you and you have nothing to give them. It's all an illusion. Because you're desperate, living in your imagination. All thoughts, all lies, all the time about anything. All thoughts, all lies, all the time about anything. And if you want to be free of your illusion, you got to overcome thoughts. You got to overcome thoughts. Isn't that something? Yes, Jesse, that is something else. You need a clear mind. A clear mind. Sean, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello, Jesse. You can hear me? Hello, Sean. How are you? I'm doing great today. I just wanted to say that you are doing God's work, and I love listening to you, and you're spreading that good message. Is it helping you? Oh my gosh, yeah. In what it's, way? Uh, it's helped me a lot to just understand the uh, natural order. Yeah. And uh, I can't lie, I'm kind of nervous talking to you right now. But um, Take a breath every last. It's just Jesse. Okay. I- I'm just wondering really what can a woman bring a man? I mean, obviously love comes from God because that's the only true love that there is. But I'm just thinking like, you know, is a woman, is she just there to help the man, you know? Um, I'm just kind of confused. Like, what's even the point of dating almost? <laughs> great energy and I don't, yeah. It's a um, the purpose of dating so that you can see if it's the right woman to marry so that you can have children. You can make children, right? That's the only yeah. reason to get married is to make children. And if you don't want to make children, there's no reason to get married. And her responsibility is to help you by watching over your children when you're away and, you know, keeping the house stuff going and taking care of your family, watching over the family when you are away. And the man's responsibility is to bring her out of, be the light. If he's married, be the light so that she can see her way out of the hell that she's in. Wow. Very, very simple and very great. <laughs> so my call, I'm calling because I, I wanted to get your opinion, your advice on this situation. Um, I have a 13-year-old son, and 
he has a lot of anger, like a lot. It's affected him in school. It's affected him all his life. And um, I'm trying to um, respect the order of the home, um, you know, but my husband's not my son's biological father. And so I, I feel torn a lot. I feel, you know, just torn between my husband and my son. What, like, do, you, what, you know. what do you mean by that? Um, because there's like, like there's just some things that, that happen in the home where my husband will, will, you know, he'll think something should be done a certain way with him and I'll think differently. And, you know, since he's, I I don't know, I I just feel like maybe, um, because he's not his biological father, my son's not going to look at him and respect him like he was. And so I, I don't, I don't know how to put it into words. You um, do you see that you should not have brought this man between your son needed you, especially since he didn't have his father. Do you see there was something wrong with bringing that man between the two, between him and you? Well, I thought I was doing the right thing by having that. a good manly, manly role model in his life because you know his father has never been around. So I thought you know little boys need men. Um, little boys so need their father, not just any man. What the? Right. Well, I and, know that now. And why do but you I say? I didn't know you, that at the time. I didn't even understand the importance of a father until I had a son. You know, I didn't yeah. understand any of that until after I had him. Here's what I would suggest: stay with the prayer, and you and your husband have an honest talk with your son. Your husband and you should apologize that you brought him between you and the son. It's hard enough be, uh, having that emptiness yearning for the father. He's not yearning for a stepfather or some other man. He's yearning, his spirit is yearning for a reconnection with his real father. And you guys apologize to him for that. And your husband apologized for trying to discipline him, knowing that he wasn't his father because the son was never going to accept that. And when the stepfather would get mad at, the son, at your son for not accepting it, that made it even worse. Right. And so you guys need to apologize and let him, your son know he needs to overcome that anger or he's just going to end up destroying himself and repeating the same or similar things and his children will suffer as well. Okay. And, and that he really need to forgive both of you, not because you're trying to get off the hook and all that because the devil makes your son think that, but just because you want him to be free of anger. And ask... Okay. Ask your son if he want to see his real father, and if he does, that you will help find him and apologize to his father for keeping him away. Okay. If he's 13, he can tell you if he want to see his father or not right now. Yeah, I think, it, I think I don't know if he just doesn't feel comfortable talking to me yeah. about his dad, because he never brings it, brings it up at all. The yeah. only time it's ever brought up is if I bring it up, and I it's one of those things that I don't really bring up. Um, but but I see the anger in him, so now I'm starting to wonder if, if I should bring it up more, you know? Yeah. You definitely it's should, like an unspoken thing. It needs to be to spoken. Him. And your husband needs to understand that, too, and not not let his ego or anything get in the way of that because right now you're trying to help your son overcome the fallen state, and uh, it's not personal. Right. You know, to, to ta- you need to take some failure in life, you know. You need to take some pain to help you wake up to bigger things, you know. What's your degree in? Uh, business management. Oh. I remember once yeah. I went to junior college. I went there to get a white girl. I didn't go there. I pre- That's to, what I went for, too. To pretty, get, I mean, not for to girls get, in general. To get an education, really I didn't go for that reason. But... um. Right. And so they asked me at the school, what do I want to uh, major in? I said, uh, business. Business. Right. Because I knew that black people major in business because that was the easiest thing to get <laughs> to do. <laughs> it didn't require much work or thinking or hard work at all. So I said, business. Because I knew what, that's right. what black people did. Right. They made it easier now. Now it's like sociology or, or mass communication. That's like the easy major that black people do nowadays. So yeah. it's even easier now. The affirmative action yeah. class. What the? Right. Yeah. 
Oh, African American uh, studies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All those dumb <laughs> classes. What the? Um, and they didn't have art and all that stuff back in those days either because that's another lazy class. Because once evil put these ideas in the minds of the children, it's put there to control them and they fill their heads with all this mess in order to control them, brainwash them. It's pure evil. And they are really coming after the kids. They're coming after the kids and they know that the father is not there to stop them and that the mother is too weak to stop them because the mama really don't care either. So they're coming after the kids. And, and this is for Breitbart. Here's a, an example of that. A viral TikTok from Breitbart, a viral TikTok video appears to show a male Disneyland employee dressed in drag and greeting children. Watch this from TikTok. Nick. I'm Melissa Prentices. I'm here to shop you around and make all your selections for the day. Amazing, huh? And so my first thought, that's evil? To put a man in a dress to direct your children at Disneyland? And he got a mustache. What's the? And, but my, first, my second thought, where are the parents? Why the parents allowed that to happen? They don't care. They do not care. I know that my children are suffering in public school. I'm just going to send them anyway. Now, I got to go and pretend to be a man at work. And an example of this mess going on, what a mess going on around the world, is from Breitbart here. The, uh, the husband, husband of a candidate competing in a gay Brazilian beauty pageant rushed onto the stage and slammed the crown to the ground uh, upon learning that his spouse, his spouse, came in second place. Watch this from Twitter. Amazing, huh? That same insanity that you see right there dwells in anyone that has anger. It's the same thing. It's because men are not in control anymore. This kind of stuff come forward because the woman is in control. The hell come through the woman until she overcome the hell by forgiving her mama, return to her father, and in return, return to God. You must return to the Father. It's only going to get worse. It can't get better. All the wrong people in the right places to make sure it doesn't get better. I'm not, we're not about to go into this. Can we just get back to what we're talking about before? But do you yeah. agree with me that the person that's yeah. selling the drug oh, oh, oh. and the person that's on the drug, they want to be on the drug? Why would you pray for them? No, they don't. That's what I was If they didn't want to do it, they, they wouldn't be don't. doing it. That's not true. You don't know the psychological well, you say, and stuff like that. that does I, I don't, I don't know. Who is that? Your mama? I, yeah. What you want to say something? To your mama? Uh, it's like, I mean, out the door now. What? Out the door now. Like, left, my guy. <laughs> your mama left? <laughs> yeah, that's like what happened. <laughs> People don't stay in the house all day. My mama don't like you. She likes everyone. No, I don't want to see how any mom could like you. And I can't <laughs> understand why you never got married. <laughs> I can't understand just, why you not like you. Unless Jason, somebody like is bowed down to you, you don't have like no friends. You Jason. Like you insult people. You are rude. You, you don't have any friends. I don't, like I don't like people. I'm a sigma. Normally I don't have friends. <laughs> you don't like God <laughs> and you don't like people? 
Man. I got to run, Jason. Thanks for your call, man. Man, that's like my start, though. All right, so. Okay. All right. Amazing. What good do your emotions do you? Uh, well, I used to lean on them pretty hard, but I don't think they do me any good because they're only the outcome of my imagination, my thoughts. Uh, that's when the uh, emotion surfaces if I entertain the thought, and, and, and then I get the feeling. And, uh, I mean, I could wrap at you for hours, I'm sure. Uh, but, uh, I don't think they're of any good, uh, unless you've got them in check, you know? So unless our emotions surprise us and come out one day in the form of whatever, we'll never be allowed to zero in on what's actually in our heart by the revelation of the Holy Spirit and fix that so that we can be a better human being. Amazing. And so you talked about a wait-and-see attitude. Right. Can you, you remember that? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm sure some people out there will recognize you know, this story. Maybe some people have heard it in other forms. But um, there was a man who lived back in the day, and... He lived a, you know, simple life. He had his farmer. He had his, you know, 10, ten acres, if you can imagine it. And um, he had, you know, a couple cows, some chickens. He had a horse. His, uh, I guess he was probably about 50, 55. And uh, his son lived on the farm with him. And he lived very deliberately. He just took care of what he had to, what was in front of him to do. He lived very simple life. He went to church on, on Sunday, just sort of took care of what he had to do. And one day his horse, his one horse runs away and all of his, uh, all the church folks come around and say, wow, that, that's, that's awful for you. How unfortunate, you know, that's just the awful, uh, situation for you. And he goes, maybe. And then a few days later, um, his horse, comes it returns and it brings back three wild horses with it and of course the, his you know the church folk come by again and they say wow that's amazing for you how how for, how fortunate and he goes maybe and then uh sure enough a couple of days later his son is out there trying to break one of the wild horses you know trying to tame it and falls off and breaks his leg and the church folk come around again and say, this is awful for you, how unfortunate. And the man says, maybe. And a couple of days later, you know, in whatever uh, country he, he lives in, a war breaks out, civil war breaks out, and the con conscription officers come around, try to draft his, his son, and they can't because he's laid up in bed, he's got a broken leg, and he uh, is not able to fighting the war and all of his church friends come around and go, Hey, this is how great this is for you. How fortunate. And he goes, maybe. So the point being that, you know, we, the things that happen to us, we really don't know, um, how good or bad they are. We don't know what the end outcome will be. And, um, you know, this is the moral of the story being a wait and see attitude yeah. is is the way to go. That's a clear example that the wait and see attitude is a is a way to go. And a lot of people get caught up with this is awful. This is an awful situation. I'm never going to get through this. But you really don't know what you know what how the situation will seem once you once you do get past it. You'll see that the bad situations are often the ones that help you grow. And if you don't get angry in those situations, if you don't have resentment, um. Because if you do, you know, if you have any any sort of re resentment towards the situation you're in, um, you're admitting that you don't have that kind of wait and wait and see attitude, yeah. and you're admitting that you don't um, that you don't trust God at all. This man had the same attitude with the so-called good thing that was happening, like when the wild horses, three right. wild horses came, right? He like well, maybe, and so he had the same attitude with the so-called good things. 
than he had with the so-called bad things. Yeah. Whereas human beings, I mean, not human because he's a human, but people tend to overreact. They tend to put a title on it. Oh, this is good. The three new horses, right? But as soon as something else happens, they call it bad. They tend to title it. Right. And so they're up and down in there. Right. Yeah, people. Right, yeah, we've been talking about poetry. Yeah. Obviously, Jason was on there talking about poetry. Right, and we he always... didn't get a chance to read his, though. No, I'm sure he will eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Eager to hear that. Yeah. Um, and the if poem is, is great. Um, and I want to just share another one. I love the if poem. Yeah, it is great. It's, poetry is, is, uh, can be amazing. It can be, absolutely. Um, and so John Burroughs is another writer. He wrote, he's a Catskill, New York writer. I think he, I think he expired in uh, maybe like 1920, 1921, so he wrote around that time period. He did. And he wrote a lot of really amazing nature essays. You know, he was a naturalist. He wrote about nature and, you know, being in nature and stuff like that. They're, his essays are amazing. He didn't write a lot of poetry, but this is nice. one of them by uh, John Burroughs. It's called Waiting. Serene. I fold my hands and wait, nor care for wind, nor tide, nor sea. I rave no more against time or fate, for lo, my own shall come to me. I stay my haste, I make delays, for what avails this eager pace? I stand amid the eternal ways, and what is mine shall know my face. Asleep, awake by night or day, the friends I seek are seeking me. No wind can drive my bark astray, nor change the tide of destiny. What matter if I stand alone? I wait with joy the coming years. My heart shall reap where it hath sown, and garner up its fruit of tears. The waters know their own, and draw the brook that springs in yonder height. So flows the good with equal law unto the soul of pure delight. The stars come nightly to the sky, the tidal wave onto the sea. Nor time, nor space, nor deep, nor high can keep my own away from me. Deep. That's amazing. Bravo. Bravo. You know, I really, when I, in, in hearing you read this and, and, and seeing the depths of it, I realize that we don't have quality stuff like that anymore. No. It, it just... And I, and I think it's because people have been taught not to be their best, and they're so distracted with the world around them that they are not, like, I'm sure when that guy was doing that, he was more connected with reality, you know what I'm saying, instead of caught yeah. up in emotions right. and, and TV and cell phones and fighting with the races and all that crap. Right, and to, to express yourself with that kind of meaning yeah. where it's all cohesive, you have to be whole. Absolutely. With the, Absolutely. you know, he wouldn't be able to express himself in that way unless he he was whole within himself. Yeah. Unless he knew himself to a certain to a certain degree. And this is someone, you know, like I said, he expired in nineteen twenty. This is someone who uh spent his entire life gardening out in nature. Um he was able to develop growing up in that meditative stillness of just watching what happens around him as opposed to reacting to it. Yes, absolutely. You know, that's what made uh, the generation before me and even before that, my grandparents and all that. Uh, um, that's what made them so wise is that they were outdoors a lot. They were yeah. dealing with the land. They were not distracted with all the other mess. And so they were able to pass a lot of that on to us because it was in them, and we just kind of picked that up, too. Yep. I don't think it's a coincidence that in more rural areas you see um, more faith. Yep. Um, Absolutely. When, when you spend huge chunks of your day uh, in stillness and just um, surrounded by nature and allowing yourself to not be distracted and just being still, um, you know, there's a, there's a huge benefit to that, and people in cities don't. Uh, don't experience no, that as much. Not at all. And 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 it remind me again of I, when I lived in Alabama. I didn't see uh, the people. The races wasn't fighting and carrying on, and they weren't like 
living in projects and out of it. Right. But when I went up north to Indiana, Chicago area up there, it was totally different up there. Races were fighting. The blacks were clustered in one little area and kept there. And it was just a mess. Yep. They were so angry and distracted. So they were not whole. They were not living from within. They were living from without. And it was just creating a habit. Yeah. Li- living in cities is an absolute scam. Yeah. It really is. People go there to make more money. But it costs more money to live there, so it's like you end up you really it, it you don't end up making as much money as you think. And and yeah. And not only does it cost more money, uh it it is you're more stressed. Yeah. And worry and fighting and yep. you lose your soul. Yep, I heard I heard somewhere once that um you know, li- living in a more rural area or living among nature, you see things little you know dramas and little uh sights and sounds that you yeah. can't you can't just explain them away yeah, you know yeah. living in a city you're surrounded by concrete and cars and perfect right angles <laughs> and steel and you go oh yeah man made that man made that you know this is all man made in his you know genius but living in nature you can't just explain those things away yeah you know there's there's a more like a, it just encourages a sense of curiosity and mystery and Amazing. um non-man-made non-man-made things some might think it's boring some might think it's outdated but in my opinion rural living is uh clearly superior yeah i, was, I just had a question uh so what went wrong with your upbringing what went wrong with it yes what do you mean i heard you talk about i heard you talk about how you went into the fallen state when you were younger. Oh. And I just want to know what led up to that. When I uh, resented my mother for turning me away from my father, the moment I yeah. became anger, angry, it turns me, it, it causes you to fall into a fallen state. You turn away from God when you're turned away from your earthly father, and you live in a fallen state in darkness and don't realize it. Uh, you grew up with both of them in the house? No. My uh, my father got my mother pregnant when they were teenagers, 18 or so. And and uh, uh, when my mother told him about it, he denied it because he didn't, he didn't think you could make a baby that way. And so she got mad, but she ended up marrying my stepfather before I was born so that I would not be born out of wedlock. But inside of my body and my soul, I was yearning for my natural father because my stepfather was, a, in all honesty, he was a, a decent man. He provided, and he tried to be my father, too. And But I had the yearning for my real father. And that's what all human beings that are born through the woman, that's what they are yearning for, the love of the father. They need to return to their earthly father. So that void would be fulfilled, and they can return to God. Have you come out of the fallen state? I believe so. <laughs> I'm sorry. I believe so. You went and forgave your mother. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Well, stay. You doing the silent prayer and all that? Yeah, I've always done it, but I've never known it to be the silent prayer. Right. And uh, there was a time where. I heard you talk about meditation, how you hang on to them. I, I used to do that, and I about lost it doing that. Nice. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, I, would, I would always sit there but in the quiet, but there was a time where I would try to hang on to them and control them, and it, that, that didn't work out. Right, but, uh, because you don't want to hold on to anything. You don't want to hold yeah. on to thoughts. You don't want to hold on to anything. You want to let go and just let life happen. You want to observe life, not try to create it. Don't hold on to anything. Hank is here with La 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 shirt on. Amazing shirt. <laughs> you can get that at hatereport.com. Yeah, the hatereport.com. And then the menu has the Teespring link. Nice. To my Teespring store, T shirts. Okay. <laughs> Billy Bonka on Streamlabs, Jesse Lee Peterson. Live. R word Asian is of the heart. When your heart is an R word, your brain will also be an R word. 
The blood isn't flowing like it should be because the heart is stone, says Billy Bonka. Amazing. What good do your emotions do you? <laughs> Mac Daddy Allen says, emotion, huh, good God, what is it good for? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Listen to me. Oh, emotion I despise. Because it means the destruction of innocent lives. Emotion means tears to thousands of mothers' eyes when their sons go off to fight <laughs> and lose their lives. I only know the uh, Bone nice. Thugs. I only know the Bone Thugs rap song. I don't know the original. That's the original. Yep. Nice. I Thank you. I butchered. I butchered the melody. Sorry, Mac Daddy Allen. I'm surprised to hear you sing. Psh, whatever.